Iceland. The resilient nation of the North Atlantic has transformed its glacial rivers into one of the world's most efficient sources of green energy. With nearly 100% of its electricity produced from renewable sources, its hydroelectric power plants, including the massive Kauranukar, stand as a testament to its engineering prowess. Kauranukar alone generates 690 megawatts of power, making it the largest in the country. These projects are vital to Iceland's sustainable future, but their construction in such extreme environments poses significant challenges. As Iceland stands at the forefront of renewable energy, one wonders, how will the island continue to rely on these mighty dams for the next 100 years? In the early 20th century, Iceland was a country primarily reliant on imported coal to meet its energy needs. As industrialization progressed and the electricity demand surged, this dependency posed a major problem. The nation was heavily affected by fluctuating coal prices and shipping costs, which left its growing industries vulnerable. Iceland's remote location in the North Atlantic and harsh winters only exacerbated these challenges, making energy security a top concern. The country urgently needed a solution to provide stable, affordable power that could sustain both its people and its budding industries, especially as they aspired to modernize and become less reliant on fossil fuels. Recognizing the potential in its abundant natural resources, Iceland began exploring alternative energy solutions. The focus quickly turned to the island's wealth of glacial rivers, which carved through the landscape and offered a seemingly endless supply of water for hydroelectric power. By the mid-20th century, the government made a pivotal decision to harness these rivers to fuel its energy transformation. This move was not only about reducing coal dependency, but also positioning Iceland as a leader in clean, renewable energy. This marked the beginning of an ambitious journey to develop large-scale hydroelectric projects that could power the nation. Among the key projects that emerged were the Kaura Nukar and Perfetal hydroelectric plants, two of Iceland's largest energy undertakings. The Kaura Nukar plant, completed in 2008, is the largest in the country, harnessing the power of the glacial rivers Adal and Yukasala Fjosdal. It produces over 690 megawatts of electricity, primarily to power an aluminum smelting plant, Alcoa Fjardal, in eastern Iceland. The Perfetal plant, built earlier in 1969, also plays a vital role in the nation's power grid, utilizing the Tulsho River to generate around 270 megawatts. These hydroelectric plants, along with others, have solidified Iceland's status as a leader in renewable energy, with nearly 100% of its electricity now generated from hydroelectric and geothermal sources. But how were these massive dams constructed in such a harsh and remote environment? Officially named the Fjordalur Power Station, Kaura Nukar's construction began in 2003 and concluded in 2008. The project involves the damming of two major glacial rivers, Yukasala Aldal and Yukasala e Fjordal, with five dams creating three reservoirs. The sheer size of these reservoirs is staggering, with Howl Sun being the largest covering 57 square kilometers and holding up to 2.1 cubic kilometers of water. The Kaura Nukar Dam, the largest of the five dams, is the highest concrete face rock fill dam in Europe, standing 193 meters tall and stretching 730 meters in length. The dam's construction required 8.5 million cubic meters of material, which was quarried from the surrounding area, then transported and compacted in layers. To ensure stability, the dam's concrete face was constructed in 15-meter-wide panels using slip-forming techniques. The water collected in the Hal Sun Reservoir is transported through an intricate network of tunnels that stretches nearly 40 kilometers. The tunnels are carved deep into the bedrock, with three massive tunnel boring machines excavating over 90% of the route. One of the most remarkable engineering feats of the Kaura Nukar project is the vertical penstock, which drops 420 meters to the underground power station. The station houses six vertical axis Francis turbines, 
each capable of generating 115 megawatts, bringing the plant's total installed capacity to 690 megawatts. The turbines are fed by two 800-meter-long steel-lined pressure shafts, which were designed to withstand the immense pressure created by the steep descent of the water. After passing through the turbines, the water is discharged into the Yukasalai Fiostal via a 144 cubic meter per second tail rance tunnel, eventually returning to its natural flow path. Sigalda Power Station, another of Iceland's major hydroelectric facilities, came online in 1978. Located just south of Lake Thorisvatn, Sigalda was constructed to meet the increasing demand for power due to the rapid industrial growth of the late 20th century. The station harnesses the Tungna River, where a 40-meter-high, 925-meter-long Rockville Dam was constructed to form the Croaks Long Reservoir. The dam is clad in asphalt for added durability against Iceland's harsh weather conditions, and the reservoir spans 14 square kilometers. Water from the Croaks Lawn is fed through an intake canal and three pressure shafts that run 216 meters to the powerhouse, where it drives three 50-megawatt Francis turbines, delivering a total capacity of 150 megawatts. One of the key challenges in the construction of Sagalda was the need to integrate its operations with neighboring stations like Harun Ayan Vas, which sits just downstream. A 550-meter tailrace canal links the two stations, ensuring a smooth flow of water between the facilities. Lake Thoris Vatten, Iceland's largest lake, plays a crucial role in regulating water flow for several power stations in the Tulsho and the Tungna catchment area, including Sigalda. Originally harnessed in the 1970s for the Perfetal power station, the lake now serves as a reservoir for multiple facilities. Water from the lake is diverted through a series of canals and tunnels, including the Vatnesfell Canal, which carries water to Sigalda. This interconnected system of reservoirs, dams, and tunnels allows for efficient water management, ensuring a steady supply of energy, even during dry periods. The Perfetal Power Station, which was Iceland's largest hydropower facility until the completion of Kauranukar, further illustrates the technical challenges faced in constructing these massive energy projects. Built in the late 1960s, Perfetal harnesses the power of the Tulshaw River by diverting its flow through a two-kilometer-long tailrace tunnel into a powerhouse located in Tulshaw Dalur Valley. The plant initially had an installed capacity of 210 megawatts, which was later increased to 270 megawatts through equipment upgrades in the 1990s. The powerhouse contains six Francis turbines, each generating 45 megawatts, and operates with a maximum flow rate of 300 cubic meters per second. One of the defining features of Perfetal's construction was the diversion of the Tulshoal River above Perfetal Mountain. The river is channeled into Bjarnal Reservoir, which was equipped with a special ice barrier structure to manage ice and slush, preventing it from reaching the reservoir and disrupting operations. This was particularly important in the early years of the plant's operation, when ice and slush could clog the intake structures, reducing efficiency. Over time, improved water management and the construction of a canal between Sultar Tangi and Perfetal have minimized the need for the ice barrier. However, it remains a vital part of the station's infrastructure. Despite these projects' impressive scale and engineering achievements, the construction of Iceland's hydroelectric plants has not been without challenges. The harsh climate, especially in the remote highlands, posed significant obstacles. At Kauranukar, extreme winter cold required heated tents for cement pours to ensure proper curing. Additionally, thousands of workers had to be housed in temporary camps in difficult-to-access areas, complicating the transportation of materials. Environmental impacts have also sparked ongoing debate. The creation of large reservoirs like Howl Sun and Croaks Lawn have altered the river's flow, submerged wilderness, and disrupted local ecosystems. Concerns about sediment buildup, particularly at Kauranukar, have arisen, with critics fearing that the reservoir could fill more quickly than expected due to high sediment loads from the Yukasala rivers. Mitigation efforts include environmental monitoring and spillway construction, but the long-term effects of these projects remain a concern for both engineers and environmentalists. 
These projects have transformed the country's energy landscape, providing a reliable renewable energy source while presenting ongoing challenges in environmental management and sustainability. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more content.